in the late 19th century there was an advancement in the field of aviation due to the second world war there was an increase in the number of propeller based aircrafts also known as piston engine aircrafts now there was a significant contribution in the naval architecture and hydrodynamics and also in aviation industry which was given by williams fraud williams fraud was a prominent naval architect and engineer he gave his famous fraud momentum theory of fraud's propeller theory which was an breakthrough in understanding the performance of the propeller the most of the propeller that we see today one of which i have in my head that is used in drones uh, uh, rc planes or you can see in propeller based aircrafts in jet engines uh, in ship propellers have been derived by this fraud's momentum theory now you may be wondering why how where when do we use this fraud momentum theory to answer that let us start with the questioning the why answering the why so why do we use fraud momentum theory it is because to understand and predicting the propeller's performance characteristics such as thrust torque efficiency and also to optimize its design in order to achieve the best performance or the desired performance we want now how do we use this fraud's momentum theory we use it by establishing the relationship between various parameters such as advance ratio vessel speed propeller rotational speed thrust torque and other parameters it also incorporates hydrodynamics principle such as conservation of the mass conservation of the momentum which we which we will see in our fraud momentum theory derivation some further in this lecture after that where do we used as i explained earlier that we use in today's modern world in drones aircraft jet engines uh, ship propellers also we can use in propeller system design uh, propulsion system design in marine industries and in also in naval architects so when do we use this fraud's momentum theory we use when we want to select initial uh, selection or sizing of propeller based on the vessel requirement or operating condition also when we want to estimate the propeller's performance during the design phase and also allowing the comparison between different propellers as you can see this propeller is of different shape whereas this is of different shape length size and other parameters so i will just take you to my whiteboard presentation where i will be explaining you the fraud's momentum theory derivation which is very simple to understand let us now look into a simple derivation of fraud's momentum theory that calculates the thrust velocity and the power of the propeller in order to do so we are considering some assumptions the first assumption is that the propeller is a thin disk or a actuator disk that is rotating in a fluid and the flow of the fluid around the propeller is one dimensional irrotational and incompressible consider a stream tube in which the fluid flows uniformly through the rotating propeller or a actuator disk as shown in the figure below as you can see in the figure the first entering section is the upstream of the fluid and at the center of the figure a actuator disk or a rotating propeller is attached or situated and at the end of the section 
of wake region is there now let us look into the cross section of a stream where the fluid enters the upstream with a velocity b infinity and a pressure p infinity as it touches the actuator disc it creates a pressure discontinuity as you can see in the diagram this pressure discontinuity is identified by p positive and p negative in a static pressure after that it flows through the disc with the same pressure and velocity at the wake region this is due to the flow being uniform now in fmt there are main three equations that we follow out of which the first equation is conservation of the mass so by conservation of the mass we can say that the mass flux which is denoted by m dot is equal to the density of the air multiplied by area of the propeller and induced velocity as the mass flux is constant throughout the stream tube we can easily say that the mass flux of the upstream and the mass flux of the actuator disc and the mass flux at the wake region all are equal to each other we can simply write the equation by neglecting the density values as it is constant for all the second main equation that we are using is the conservation of momentum conservation of momentum is nothing but newton's second law which says that the rotary force or thrust is equal to the rate of change of momentum as we know the thrust is denoted by t which will be equal to the mass flux and the rate of change of velocity that is the velocity at the wake region minus the velocity at the upstream as the velocity far upstream is zero therefore t the thrust is equal to mass flux into the wake velocity the third main equation that we are considering is the cons energy conservation energy conservation says that the work done by the rotor is equal to change of energy of the fluid work done is nothing but thrust into velocity which is equal to half mass flux into the difference between the wake velocity square and the upstream velocity square as i said earlier that the upstream velocity is equal to zero therefore the equation of the work done by the rotor becomes half m dot v w square now considering the second and third equation we can easily convert it into in the form of thrust divided by mass flux which is equal to the wake velocity which is also equal to the wake velocity square divided by 2v now by neglecting the uh, same terms we can say that the wake velocity is equal to twice the upstream velocity we have previously derived an equation equation number 2 that is t is equals to 
thrust is equals to mass flux into wake velocity. Now we are going to substitute the values of the mass flux and the wake velocity that we have just derived. So the thrust value becomes T is equals to 2 rho A V square. This equation gives the thrust of the propeller. Now, in order to calculate the velocity of the propeller, taking V at the left hand side, we get V is equals to under root thrust divided by 2 into area of the propeller into density of the air. Now, in order to calculate the power of the propeller, it is nothing but thrust into velocity. As we have recently derived the values of P, thrust and velocity, we are substituting in it. Therefore, it becomes T multiplied by under root T divided by 2 rho A. So these are the three main equation that the fraud momentum theory gives us. By this way, we have completed our derivation of FMT. Now let's summarize this lecture in short. First, we, show, we saw the introduction of FMT. Next, we saw how, when, where, uh, why do we use Proud's momentum theory. And then we saw a simple derivation of FMT. So, I hope you like the video and also I am providing a small presentation for your further refer uh, references in the description below. So, please click on it. Thanks for watching.